Mr.'s Black Veil is a story written by Nathaniel Hawthorne in 1836. In the beginning of the story, it is time to go to the meeting house to begin the day of worship in the Puritan community of Milford. Once the congregation is present in the meeting house, it is time for the minister, Mr. Hooper, to enter the premises. At the sight of him, the guy who rang the bell is shocked to see that Mr. Hooper has a black veil on his face. He was so shocked, he said out loud, but what has good Parson Hooper got upon his face? The congregation inside heard this, and so as he entered the meeting house, Mr. Hooper could see that everybody was watching him. It's kind of like in high school when you arrive to class ten minutes late, and your classmates just look at you like you just killed seven people. Anyway, when Mr. Hooper arrived, he didn't act any differently than he has before. He walked with his usual style, slowly and smoothly, he bent his head slightly to the pews, and then he bowed to the oldest man in the parish. Mr. Hooper was not the greatest at delivering sermons, but now he stood there with his black veil talking about secret sin, and the words he said in this sermon possessed some sort of power, power that moved the entire congregation in every sentence. It would be like your boring physics teacher coming into class one day wearing an Iron Man suit. Suddenly, every word he said would officially be awesome. After the service, the congregation scattered out of the meeting house with confused looks on their faces, thinking about what they had just witnessed in that room. So it's kind of like what happens in a university when math class is over. People broke out into little groups, discussing the reasoning behind Mr. Hooper's mysterious black veil. Later in the afternoon, Mr. Hooper had a funeral to attend for a young lady who had been part of his congregation. He still had the veil on, but at least this time it was appropriate for the occasion. There was one unusual instance in the course of the funeral. When Mr. Hooper bent down to the coffin to see the corpse, the corpse looked as if it shuddered. After the funeral, a woman described it as, the minister and the maiden spirit were walking hand in hand. The next thing on Mr. Hooper's schedule was to go marry the best-looking couple in Milford. When he arrived, he inevitably had the veil on, which turned out to be more of the center of the attention than the wedding itself. The atmosphere introduced by the veil is described to have dimmed the light of the candles. The description of the bride is a curious case. She trembled and became incredibly pale. There was talk that the young lady who had been buried a couple hours earlier at the funeral had come back from the grave and encompassed the bride to be married. As freaky as that may sound, that's not really an unusual thought coming from the Puritan era in the early 1600s. Just wait until the 1690s when the Salem witchcraft trials would be in full swing. On a side note, shout out to Isaac Newton who published Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy in 1687. So coming back to the story, there was no other topic of conversation among the people of Milford other than about Mr. Hooper's black veil. The veil was so repulsive that it slowly put Mr. Hooper into a life of isolation. The people in his congregation avoided him. Children ran away from him. Even his wife Elizabeth had left him because of it. The one thing that the veil did for him was to make him a more effective minister. And so he lived this life all the way until his deathbed. He became such a popular, unusual figure of the town that several people had come to see him at his last hour. The last scene of the story begins with Reverend Mr. Clark of Westbury declaring to Mr. Hooper that his time has come and it is finally time for the black veil to be lifted. As he goes to take it off of him, the minister takes his hands and covers the veil so that the reverend can't get it off, and if he tried, he would be fighting against the dying man, and that, quite frankly, wouldn't be the best for his reputation. So the black veil stayed on Mr. Hooper, and with the last bit of energy he had left, he sat up in his bed and made his final statements. His final words brought about the lesson of the sermon mentioned in the beginning of the story about secret sin. He says that everybody should be trembling at each other, because each and every person is responsible for their own secret sins. These sins are not revealed to one another, but surely all of them are detected by God. Just because he has a black veil on to represent his sin doesn't make him different from everybody else. It doesn't make him a monster. What he sees under the black veil are dark, judgmental people, all part of the same sinful circumstances. This is what it took for the people to understand the meaning of the veil. And so after he died, they buried him with the veil still on his face. Mr. Hooper's corpse had a faint smile on it, the familiar smile that he had several times throughout the story, which has now become the smile of a teacher whose students have fully realized the lesson he was teaching.